Hey guys and welcome to this week's Tutorial Thursday. We're going to be talking about one of the most important data structures that exist. Um, this thing is used far and wide throughout programming and it is known as the hash map. It goes by other names such as maybe just a plain map or a dictionary, but the most common name it goes by is the hash map. Now, I'm going to explain how a hash map works and it's going to look sort of similar to a set. So if you're still not sure about how sets work, make sure you watch our last video because we talked about sets and I'll show you why in just a second it's very similar to sets. Now, hash maps are a data structure that work off of what's called key value pairs. The easiest way to understand a key value pair is to look at something like a dictionary. The key is like the word that the value, which is the definition, is describing. So in this case, our key here would be dog, and our value would be the entire description that I'm not going to... Read. <laughs> so um, that would be the value here. Now it's important to note that these keys and these values can actually be any data type that you want. For example, in this case, the key and value are both strings, but they could be integers, characters, they can even be arrays, lists, or other objects, or even linked lists, or anything like that. And before we go any further, let's remember how hashing works and how it works in a set because I don't think I covered it well enough there. So let's say for example, I want to insert the character A into my set. Now what will happen is it will take that character and unlike an array where it would just store A at index, you know, say for example, zero, the index itself would be a component or dependent on the element that we add in. Now, how would it do that? Through hashing. Now, what hashing means is you are taking an input and you are performing some sort of operation on it. Now, in a lot of different compilers and languages, that operation is often very mathematical, but just so we get the understanding of how it works, let's take a very simple hash. Now, in this case, our hash is we are just going to append the letters A, B, C, and D to whatever our character is and make that our index. So in this case, if we wanted to hash A so we could store it into our set, all we would do is just append A, B, C, and D to the end of A and make that our index. So this is what our set would look like after we finish adding in character A. A would be stored at index A, B, C, D. What that also means is if we were to ever try and insert a second A, well, when we're trying to come up with the index of that A, unlike an array which would just insert it into the next available slot, we would find the index by doing the exact same operation and because we're using it on the exact same character, the index is just going to be the exact same thing. Which means when we insert a second A or an element that already exists, we're going to put it in the exact same index and just end up overwriting it. And therefore sets cannot have unique elements. Now it's very similar for the keys of hash maps. These keys are pretty much unique identifiers. And the way you get them is simply by taking your key, which maybe in this case would be A, and just performing a hash on it. And that is the sort of index, the index that your key would be stored at. So keys can only have unique elements, just like elements in a set. Now values are different. Values can not only contain just duplicates, but you can actually even contain multiple elements. Now, let me give you a very easy example to try and understand this. Let's look at the cast of Brooklyn Nine-Nine because I love that show and make a quick example out of it. So let's say we had Terry, Gina, and Charles, and we wanted to make a hash map to show what each of them had for breakfast. Now, Gina and Charles both had an apple for breakfast, while Terry, because he's huge and he's super buff, had eggs for breakfast, okay? So in this case, our key would be, well, every single individual here because they are unique elements. We want to know what they had for breakfast. So we have Terry here, we have Gina here, and we have Charles here. And the only reason I'm not writing out their full name is because my writing sucks and it would take too long. Now, if we were to map out now what each of them had for breakfast, well, Terry had the eggs, um, Gina and Charles both had the apple 
So as you can see here, values do not have to be unique. We can have the same element twice as we see here uh, from Gina and Charles. Whereas the keys have to be unique. So we can't have another Terry key. Or if another Terry character were to show up and we wanted to add him as our key, we would have to add maybe Terry 2 or something so that it would work. So this is just to really stress the point that keys have to be unique where values can be pretty much anything you want. Now let's get into a more realistic example of where you would actually use uh, hash maps in programming. One last note we'll mention, key value pairs are found in a lot of different places. Now one of them is JavaScript object notation, which if you haven't heard of it, is a way that a lot of people like to store data, especially when exchanging data through things like APIs. So as you can see here, it's sort of simple. We have a key, which is in this case, a string called description. And the value here is a string called quarter. Mode is required. The name is QTR and the type is a string. Now, when you're sending data, you might have a lot of different values for maybe stuff like mode or name or anything like that. But it's just good to note that um, this key value pair stuff is found in other places. And it's also somewhat useful to know when you start looking into databases and stuff like that. One of the most useful cases for hash maps is actually graph problems. So if you ever have tried practicing for interviews, you know that graph problems are sort of like one of the higher up problems or one of the harder problems uh, to solve. And the first way you solve any graph problem is by simply storing the graph. So in this case, I have a very simple graph. And if you're not acquainted with graphs, I'll just briefly explain this to you. We have a couple what's called nodes. Um, and you can think of these nodes just like uh, subway stations or destinations. So for example, we have subway station number A, subway station uh, B, C, D, and wow, E, there we go. <laughs> um, and everything that connects them is called an edge. So this little line right here is known as an edge. And you can just think of it as like a road that goes from subway station A to B. So as we can see here, A is connected to B, B is connected to D, um, B is also connected to C and E, E is connected to B as well and, and C. So this is a bi-directional graph, which means every road uh, connects both ways. So A doesn't just connect to B, but B also connects to A. And you might have some situations where, you know, for example, uh, it'll be a unidirectional uh, graph where A connects to B, but B does not connect to A. But just for simplicity's sake, Let's just stick with this one. And the first, like I said, the first part to solving any graph problem is by storing the graph. So what we're going to do here is we are going to use our hash map to store exactly where our, um, where each node is connected to. That way we know uh, which node connects to which. Now, the keys in this case are going to be the node. And to, do to the denote the node, I'm just going to use a single character. For the values, it might get a bit more tricky. As we can see here, some nodes connect to more than one other node. So while our values are going to contain uh, characters, they might contain multiple characters depending on which node we're looking at. So our values are going to be a list of character. So this one here is a co uh, character and this one here is a list of characters. Sorry for my atrocious writing. I'm writing on a trackpad. So let's start. So we can see here that A connects to, well, just a single node and that single node is B. So we write A as our key and the nodes that it connects to is pretty much just B. Now let's look at B. B connects to A, D, E, and C. So we're going to use B as our key here and we can see that B connects to A, uh, C, D, and E. And we're just going to stop that off like that. Now we look at C. C is connected to B and E. And I'll just go ahead and fill the rest in for you because you probably get it by now. Here is what the final graph would look like. Now, it's important to note that in a case where you're given, say, for example, a unidirectional graph, you would do it a bit differently. And there's also a lot of certain semantics that you have to do while you're actually coding to make sure that um, 
you get the graph perfectly and you're not doing more operations than you need to. So in that in mind, let's go ahead and check out exactly how I would code something like this in Python. All right, so I took the problem from before and I translated it into code. Now, what I have over here is how that problem's input would look if you saw it on a competitive programming uh, competition, maybe just a caddis problem or an online interview. So the way graphs are usually given are in this format. The first thing we're given is how many nodes there are, or sometimes even how many edges there are going to be slash roads. So we can see here that we have five nodes that are given to us, A, B, C, D, and E. Now, every single line, all five of these lines have two parts to it. The first part is the node that we're looking at, and the second part are all the connections, all the no other nodes that node is connected to. And if you want to put that into hash map turns, the first character in each of these lines are going to be our keys. So A is our key for this line, B is our key for this line, etc, etc. The other characters are going to be the values. So A is connected to B. B is connected to A, C, D, and E, just like we saw on that diagram before. It's just a sort of easier way to input it. Now let's talk about how we would input this data into our program and actually create the map. So we can see here, the first thing we're doing is I'm pretty much just taking in this number, just so I know how many lines there are and how many nodes there are. So I create a variable called nodes, um, you know, maybe you could even name it number of nodes and pretty much I just take in the input. Now the second thing I do is I create our map. So to create a map in Python, a dictionary in Python, uh, all you pretty much have to do is just create these curly braces. There, another way to do it would be like no map equals like uh, dict like that. But I like this way just because it looks a lot nicer. So what we are going to do now is we're going to have a for loop that iterates through all these lines. So uh, we have five nodes. So this for loop is going to run five times in this example. And each time it runs, we're going to be looking at a separate line. Now, just a bit of semantics on how to actually read the lines. What we have to do is we have to split these lines up. Um, and the way we split them is using the spaces. So we can see here, this input is separated by spaces. Every single element uh, character here is separated by spaces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this entire line and we're gonna store it in an array uh, that is split up by spaces. So to give an example of how that might look, um, this line, uh, when we store it in our line variable, would look like this. It would have B as the first element, A as the second element, C as the third element, D, and then E. And it would just be pretty much uh, an, a, an array, a list that looks like that. Now, we know that the key is the first character of every line. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called key and we're just going to make it equal to uh, the first element or the zeroth index of our array called line. And in this case, it would be B. So the next thing we're going to do is we got to remember how our hash map is going to look our hash map is pretty much going to be the keys are going to be characters and the values are going to be a list of characters, right? Because every key has just a single character, but every key, which is a node can connect to multiple other nodes. So we need a list of characters to denote that. Now, what we're going to do is we're simply going to check to see whether or not our key is present in our node map or not. So right now, if we were to just start the program, our node map would be empty. So when we get to the first line of input after uh, this one, um, our node map, what we would do is we would create uh, the index, the key A, and then we would say A in our hash map. So it would, it would look like this. It would look like this right now. We're going to say, okay, A is equal to a list of elements. Okay. Now what we do after that is every single element in our line after the first character, what we're going to do is we're just going to add it to this list, right? So in this case, uh, the first line, since A is only connected to B, it's pretty much just going to be like that, right? So to put it in proper notation, it would look like that. Now in the second line, what we do is we look at B and we create an empty list. And then in this for loop, 
one by one, we are going to add every single one of these characters in there. So A is going to get added, and then eventually C gets added, D gets added, and then E gets added. And you would do this for every single line, and that's how it would get stored. So let me just copy this input and show you how it would run. So at the end here, you can see I just print the map. As you can see, when we print the map, this is what we get. Now, as you can see, A is connected to the element B, C is connected to B and E. Now, if you're wondering why C is here and not B, it is because just like a set, uh, these uh, hash map stores its keys and its elements unordered because of the way it stores it. But that also means, like I said, it also has an O of 1, so a constant lookup time. And if you're not familiar with that, just rewatch the set video where I explain why it has that lookup time. And that's pretty much it. So C connects to B and E, B connects to A, C, D, and E, E connects to B and C and D connects to B. Now before I end this video off, I just want to thank all you guys who are in the Forge right now. I have some big changes coming to the Forge that I'll keep you guys updated on. And I also want to say for Tutorial Thursdays, I'm going to start creating a Google form so you guys can suggest what you want to see in the next Tutorial Thursdays. And I'm going to start creating polls in the Facebook group where you can vote on them. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next week.